Right, welcome back to the channel. This is the channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally like to talk a load of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be counting down our top or bottom five publishers that used to be pretty good, but now recently just pumping out lackluster reprints and not really producing as much innovative content as I used to back in the day so remember these are my own opinions if my opinions make you want to punch a hole through the plasterboard wall of your 250 grand help to buy a new build then feel free to smash your house up but with that in mind let's crack on with this somewhat controversial or not controversial list bollocks so the first publisher on this list is Rio Grande Games. What the fuck happened to Rio Grande Games? They used to produce all these wonderful games like Race for the Galaxy. They've done Power Grid, Puerto Rico, and for some unknown reason, for a number of years now, they have basically disappeared off the radar, okay? They did publish Underwater Cities and Beyond the Sun, which are reportedly quite good games, but by and large, the days of Bonanza and Sulk in the Mine Canada are well and truly behind us, which is an absolute tragedy. I haven't got a clue what happened to Rio Grande Games. I can only think that they maybe got taken over by a bigger publisher and they've been sidelined. But I do shed a tear for Rio Grande Games because way back in the day, they did provide us with some cracking titles, didn't they? So number four on the list of our top five publishers that used to publish decent games but have been a little bit lazy or lacklustre in their recent offerings is Stonemar Games, right? Do you remember when Scythe was first kickstarted? Everyone went apeshit for that title. It broke new ground, didn't it? The component quality was off the charts the gameplay was solid and it was supported for a number of years afterwards for some weird reason Stonemar Games have sort of stopped producing those quality games they moved away from the kickstarter model in favor of publishing games that weren't actually designed by jamie stigma so you've had games like wingspan which whilst it looks nice it's basically just top trumps for birds in it and then you had red rising which was a really sort of weak card drafting tableau building game they had games like charterstone which tried to implement a legacy aspect into a worker placement game it didn't really work that well did it so for some weird reason stonemar games are sort of lost their way a little bit and i'm just waiting for scythe 2 to poke its head above the trenches so everyone could get their bayonets ready and stab it in the eyeballs you know what i mean scythe 2 come on mr stigma what are you doing with yourself so the next publisher on this list of our bottom five publishers that used to make good games but sort of just produce dog shit now is days of wonder i get quite nostalgic about this because days of wonder they used to produce stellar titles didn't they tickets to ride was an amazing looking game it played quite well didn't it shadows over camelot one of the first hidden traitor games with luscious components memoir 44 a sprawling huge game which you could take at its base level and then add to it and they kept on producing battle maps and extra content for that. Days of Wonder got taken over by Asmodee and since that has happened, all they've really produced is a few map packs for Ticket to Ride. You've had a game called Corinth, which was a tiny little small box game. And there's a game called Deep Blue, which we haven't played, but it sort of flew under the radar. So the days of the Cleopatra game that had that wonderful board in a box type thing. And we used to look forward to the yearly offering of Days of Wonder because it was guaranteed that it was going to be a really fresh original experience so again those days are sadly behind us and it looks like Asmodee gobbling up all of these wonderful publishers has done irrevocable harm to the industry in our opinion. So the next publisher on this list is Fantasy Flight Games. Oh my God, Fantasy Flight Games. How the hell is this on this list? Well, I'll tell you why it's on this list. is because years and years ago, Fantasy Flight used to produce these sort of semi-complex games. You think about Fury of Dracula 2nd Edition. It was a lot smaller, a lot more complex, and there was a lot more fun in this game. Similarly, you had Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition, a big sprawling mass of a game. Arkham Horror, whilst it was clunky, it felt epic in proportions, right? But at some point, in the not so distant future, Fantasy Flight changed their model and they decided to strip everything down, streamline all their popular titles and to the point where there's basically nothing left. If you think about Arkham Horror third edition, they've basically taken everything that made the original charming and they've just relegated it down to this 
sort of bare bones skeleton that you have to add to to make it playable, right? Same thing with Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Okay, we do like that game, we do love it, but they've taken out a lot of the content that made the game feel absolutely huge. It's still big, but it's not as big and complex as it used to be. And you have to spend another 90 quid for an expansion, which is the cost of a really expensive base game, right? What we seem to be getting with Fantasy Flight is just a load of second editions. If you think about Descent 3rd Edition, where the game wasn't that complex to start with, but it's been stripped back and it's just a case of rolling dice and seeing what happens. And it's more of a toy with these huge elaborate miniatures and the actual spectacle of what it looks like on the table seems to be more prevalent than the actual gameplay experience. Same thing with Manchester Madness. This has been digitalized. I know a lot of people like this game, but we found it to be too mechanical and the app sort of removes you from the actual hands-on experience of the game. Right? So Fantasy Flight seems to have this idea that less is more, and we don't think that that is the way to go. So number one on this list of publishers that have disappointed us recently is Portal games. I remember cracking open Robinson Crusoe when it was first released and the game was awe-inspiring, right? Once I'd managed to learn Sanskrit and decode the rulebook, it was the first game that really took the prospect of you losing very, very seriously. And one of the things that we really liked about it is the fact that you could defer your pain and suffering by shuffling cards back into the decks, right? And they might come back later and bite you in the arse. All we seem to get now from Portal games is second edition rehashes. For some bizarre reason, Portal Games just now focuses on their game found Kickstarter type projects. I think the catalyst of this was the failure of Rattle Battle Grab the Loot. I mean, that flopped big time and deservedly so because it was shit, right? They changed their economic model to put the risk of the project's success or failure on the actual people that are going to play the game, the backers, right? So you saw this with Strong Old Undead. Word around a campfire is that that game is practically unplayable because the retail version doesn't have some essential content that was available in a Kickstarter version. And it seems that all the portal games are throwing out now are rehashes of games that have been released previously. First Martians is a re-implementation of Robinson Crusoe. You had a rehash of Port 8. It was going to be re-themed into some weird, bizarre theme, but they relented at the last minute. And even with the latest game, they started producing the football management simulator. It's a re-implementation of a game that came previously. So I don't know what's happened at Portal Games. It just seems that they've lost their way a little bit. And I'm just hoping that they can return to the innovation that happened in the early 2010s because that was a really exciting period and we were lapping up portal games at that point so there you go that's our top or bottom five publishers that used to excite us but now they tend to disappoint us more often than not what do you think of our list have we upset you with our lambasting of some industry heroes let us know down in the comments below right but for now if you ain't subscribed already do so hit a like button all that bullshit we'll see you next time